Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. It's been a while since I've done a Raspberry Pi project or a Raspberry Pi video, but since it is summertime, I've been wanting to get back into doing more projects and I thought that I would start off by making a video on how I actually set up my Raspberry Pi for machine learning. If you've checked out my AlphaGo video already, it's going to be pretty much the same setup. So if you've already seen that video, then you're probably good. But if you're just looking to figure out how you set up TensorFlow Lite on a Raspberry Pi, then keep watching. Also, if you're new here, I'm Jordan and I make videos about artificial intelligence, machine learning, emerging tech, and grad life, as well as being a PhD student at MIT. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely consider subscribing. And if there are projects that you'd like to see me do using a Raspberry Pi, definitely let me know because I need ideas. So in terms of physical hardware, there are two, I guess three things that I use in order to run machine learning models on a Raspberry Pi. The first is a Raspberry Pi. I keep mine in these protective cases, mostly so that I can label them with Bob or Alice, which is in the closet. Uh, it also just helps me keep things organized if I'm using this in another system of devices. It makes it a lot easier to manage them day to day without having to worry about damaging the actual Pi itself. I also have it hooked up to a power cord. So this is an AC plugs into the wall power cord. It has an on off switch, which is helpful for me because it means that I can leave it plugged in, but I don't have to worry about leaving it on all the time. And then the other thing that I use is this Coral Edge TPU. And so I bought this a couple years ago, and essentially what it lets you do is run on-device machine learning models uh, using TensorFlow Lite on devices like a Raspberry Pi. Also, if you're wondering, this is a Pi 4. I only really have Pi 4s right now, um, but you can also do this on the Pi 3. This Raspberry Pi is already actually totally set up, so I'm not gonna go over how to do that. It already has the micro SD card in it. It's already been, um, booted so that I can, you know, log in so that I can SSH using terminal. So I'm not gonna go over that. There are a ton of awesome tutorials on how to do that. I will leave some of them in the description if you want to know more, but I'm going to start off by basically turning the Pi on and then using VNC Viewer to effectively log into the Pi remotely so that I don't need an external mouse or keyboard or monitor, I can just bring it up on my laptop itself. I'll also say that similar to setting up a Raspberry Pi, there are a bunch of instructions on how to do this online in terms of setting up the Pi for the Edge TPU. I will link the one that I use down below. I use the one from Google Corral's website, which basically walks you through how to set it up so that it works with the Corral Edge TPU. Uh, but there are definitely other ways of doing it if that's what you're interested in. And so the first thing we have to do, and I've done a factor reset on this Pi, is install the Edge TPU runtime so that the Pi can actually recognize the Edge TPU and use it as a resource when it comes to running TensorFlow models. The way to do that is listed in these instructions. These are also updated based on whatever the current release is. So I would look at that if you're trying to figure out which packages you should be installing. And then from there, you can install the actual Edge TPU runtime and connect the accelerator to your Pi. Importantly, you should wait until you've installed this before attaching your accelerator. If you do happen to do that first, you can just unplug it and plug it back in, but it won't actually recognize it if it was already plugged in in the first place. From there, I installed TensorFlow Lite, and so that's pretty straightforward, as you can see here. They actually don't include that in the instructions here. I believe if you install Pi Corral, which is a library that's built on top of TensorFlow Lite that is optimized to accelerate things using this Coral TPU. Uh, I always just install TensorFlow Lite first so that I know which versions I'm working with. You can also use TensorFlow Lite directly on the Edge TPU, but if you're interested in not necessarily hard coding everything up front and having to kind of get into the weeds of TensorFlow, I would probably recommend installing Pi Corral because it's a bit of a higher level abstracted version and makes it a little bit easier for you to run models if you're just getting started. And then from there, if you wanna test it, there are actually a bunch of test models, classifiers that you can download from GitHub. I'll include a link to the instructions for that here. I usually test it with a classifier to make sure that 
it's working generally, not necessarily that the classifier is accurate, but that the model is being accelerated via the Edge TPU and that it's not just trying to use the actual Raspberry Pi's onboard system. But from there, you have set up your Raspberry Pi for machine learning. There are definitely other ways to do this. So I do this using a hardware accelerator. There are ways of also essentially using your Raspberry Pi as a computer and then using some sort of remote server. So something like Paperspace, AWS, Google Cloud to run a model too. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments. I tend to prefer the hardware approach just because it's a little bit easier for smaller projects, but for larger projects, it actually can make more sense to set up your Raspberry Pi with a remote server instead. And if you're interested in developing your own Raspberry Pi project, but want to brush up on your machine learning skills first, I'd highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know that it is an amazing interactive tool for learning STEM built off the principle of active problem solving. Brilliant has an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visually simulating and hands-on ways, including courses on computer science fundamentals, algorithms, and neural networks. In fact, if you ever want to learn how computer programming works but were put off by opaque coding language, Brilliant can help you learn how to program without having to dig through the weeds of coding syntax through these fun, interactive challenges. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org jordan or click on the link in the description, and the first 200 people to use that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Again, I'll link my AlphaGo video up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here, and otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!